Lakers' secret plan with Andre Drummond. The NBA buyouts for 2020 came with a bit of surprise as we saw a number of veterans change teams. The most principal deals included Blake Griffin and LaMarcus Aldridge moved to the Brooklyn Nets, while Andre Drummond finally completed his move to the Los Angeles Lakers. And with Anthony Davis and LeBron James currently sidelined, any boost the team can get will go a long way. Initially, the move had appeared to be nothing but an attempt by the Lakers to boost their team. However, recent reports have shown that the Lakers want to do more than that, as they already have a secret plan for Drummond. Welcome to Courtside, where we discuss all the trending NBA news and rumors and keep you updated on everything you need to know about the game. Make sure you watch this video till the end and don't forget to hit the subscribe and share button. All right, let's get to some action. Andre Drummond's injury. Before making his debut with the LA Lakers, Drummond had not played for six weeks, and he said that he was going into the game with an all-time high excitement. However, unfortunately, as many reporters and analysts have termed it, Drummond stubbed his toe out of his Lakers debut. In the Wednesday game against the Milwaukee Bucks, which ended in a 112-97 loss, Drummond staggered out of the game due to a bruised right toe in the third quarter. While many thought he would come back to the game, the veteran player didn't. The next thing everyone saw was a negative x-ray result of his stubbed toe. Lakers coach Frank Vogel said that the injury will be reevaluated in due time, and the player is expected to be in action very soon. As regards to how it happened, Drummond revealed that the Buck center Brooks Lopez had been the one who stepped on his toe in the first quarter. He said, I didn't really think anything of it. I came back in the second quarter and it was hurting a little bit more. And then after halftime, I finally took my sock off to look and my whole toenail was gone. So it was just all bad from there. I couldn't walk or run. So I just told coach to take me out. As earlier mentioned, Drummond had not played in six months. And this was on February 12th with his former team, the Cleveland Cavaliers. He had been pulled out of the team rotation when he began searching for a potential trade partner. When the Cavaliers realized that they couldn't find a deal that they liked, he decided to sign with the Lakers. The deal was lengthy and probably would have caused any player involved to lose motivation. Drummond, however, said that he was in his best shape and was looking ahead to play for the Lakers. Drummond started his first game with the Lakers wearing a pair of Air Jordan X1 IE sneakers, but later changed them for a pair of LeBron 16 lows. At halftime, the player received treatment which delayed his readiness for the third quarter. This, of course, caused the coach to start Montrese Harrell at center when the second half began. Drummond got back into the game with nine minutes remaining on the clock for the third quarter and then left the game with 7.55 on the clock. The player's injury was so bad that he had to limp to the bench with a big wrap around his big toe. The player said in the post-game interview, What do you do for a toe? I'm not really sure what to do. I'm just going to talk to the training staff and find out what's the best thing to do to get back as quick as possible. Lakers forward Markeith Morris then mentioned that he had once had a toenail injury and it was a painful ordeal for him. He added that even though he played the next game, it took a month and a half before he stopped feeling any pain. Drummond also mentioned that even though he had lost a toenail before, this particular one was very painful. The veteran left the game with four points on two for six shooting, a single rebound, two assists, one block, three turnovers, and four fouls in 14 minutes. The team saw a lot of energy displayed in the first quarter, especially from Drummond, but all these dropped when Drummond had to receive his first treatment. Was there a certain connection between the player's injury and the team's subsequent loss? We'll never know. Eventually, Marcus Gasol joined in the fourth quarter and recorded two points, three rebounds, two blocks, one assist, and a steal in six minutes. After the game, Gasol refused to speak with reporters, something he has been doing since the Lakers signed Drummond, which caused several members of the team to praise his professionalism. Wesley Matthews said of the player, Obviously, it's not easy by any means. Give that man his credit. We love what we do and we compete and we are ultra competitors, and that's never easy for anybody in that position. For him to step up like he did and make the plays that he made and to be there and be supportive of us the whole time, I mean, I got nothing but respect for him. Still in the dark over what went down with Gasol? Here's what you need to know. The Lakers plan with Andre Drummond. The Lakers are currently playing without LeBron James and Anthony Davis, and this has no doubt affected the team's performance. The addition of Drummond to the team is an attempt at getting all the boost they can. The team hopes to compete for a title, and if LeBron and Davis return before the playoffs, then the addition of Drummond will definitely make sense. This is because journalists have suggested that the veteran will be a better finisher if he plays next to LeBron. Also, Drummond is the sort of player who brings fire to every game he plays, and the Lakers believe that this sort of motivation will come in handy during the playoffs. Also, the Lakers have a plan for a potential flop season. If Andre Drummond refuses to reach his past form, the Lakers could easily put him on the bench or even wave him. Now, let's take a more critical look at the plan of the Lakers. Before the Lakers signed Andre Drummond, they had a number of centers on their roster, with Drummond now on the team. They have a total of four centers, which includes Montrese Harrell, Marc Gasol, and Anthony Davis, who played a major part of the playoffs as a center last season. With the arrival of Drummond, the coach will be forced to make some very hard decisions. As expected, Coach Vogel wouldn't tamper with Anthony Davis, and since Harrell isn't a regular, it appears like Marcus Gasol is the one who would bear the brunt of Drummond's arrival. And according to Jovan Buha of The Athletic, this is exactly what the coach is going to do. 
This source has revealed that the coach will now start drumming over Gasol, and this was evident in the game against the Milwaukee Bucks. Gasol signed with the Lakers in November and has started all the 38 games he's been available for this season. In those 38 games, Gasol recorded an average of 4.8 points, 3.9 rebounds, 2 assists, and 1.2 blocks per game. Drummond, on the other hand, recorded an average of 17.5 points, 13.5 rebounds, 1.6 steals, and 1.2 blocks per game with the Cleveland Cavaliers as a starter earlier this season. We can argue that Drummond is obviously a better center than Gasol, which would be completely true, but this does not change the fact that Gasol has been quite impressive for the Lakers this season. It is impossible to overlook his importance in the five-man unit of LeBron James, Dennis Schroeder, Contavious Caldwell-Pope, Anthony Davis, and Gasol, who have collectively posted a net rating of plus 13.9 in 280 minutes. In the NBA, this ranks third in all the lineups that have played at least 250 minutes together. If this partnership was so good, why would the Lakers want to change it at all? This change is because the team can do better. Also, Drummond offers more individual offense than Gasol at the moment. And if you've been watching the Lakers games, then you would know what the team desperately needs since the absence of Davis and LeBron is individual offense. Drummond isn't particularly an efficient post-up scorer, but his aggressiveness as a player will come as a major advantage for the Lakers. It is also important to note that Gasol was not an aggressive player in any sense of the word. However, it becomes harder to make a case for Drummond when Davis and LeBron return. Gasol has been highly successful with them, and it becomes a bit difficult to believe that Drummond will achieve this level of chemistry immediately. Davis, LeBron, and Gasol played a total of 346 minutes together, and they posted a net rating of plus 14, an impressive figure. We can only hope that Drummond will solidify himself as a starting center since the coach has already given him the power in the coming games, and the return of Davis and LeBron will be all the team needs to reach their full potential. Fortunately for Gasol, this transition will not be sharp and complete. The team will start by giving Drummond significant minutes to play while slowly phasing Marc Gasol out of rotation. The coach said of the new development, I think people need to understand how good of a player Mark is and how valuable he is to what we're doing. And we're going to play our most important players, so he's going to help us win a championship this year. That's the plan. That's the vision. Obviously, Andre coming along gives us the depth, but we are going to need all three of those guys. We stated that from day one. Mark is one of our most important players. He dominated the game tonight with five points, okay? And this is what Mark brings to the table. Gasol, who had previously refused to speak with three reporters, finally broke his silence and said that it was a tough pill for him to swallow. He admitted that things changed quickly in the NBA, but he was still committed to the team. Also, despite his impressive performance against the Toronto Raptors, the coach has mentioned that Drummond will be a starter as that was the reason why he was signed. In the win against the Raptors, Gasol recorded a season-high 13 points, 9 rebounds, and 4 blocks, all of which helped the Lakers build a 34-point lead. Gasol then said after the game that he is staying ready, fully committed, and patiently awaiting the return of Drummond to the court. This is no doubt a trying period for the player. For the sake of the team, we really hope that Drummond hits his best form for the team. Do you think this plan with Drummond will work out? Or the Lakers would still need to wait for the return of Davis and LeBron James to reach their best form? We'll have to wait and see. Tell us what you think in the comments section. Don't forget to share with your friends, and thank you for watching. We are Courtside.